Well, this morning, as, as uh, we share with the kids, we're going to talk a little bit about the feeding of the multitudes, as, as John talks about it. He doesn't give us a, a clear number of what that is, but we're going to continue our lessons through the Gospel of John. And this week we were dealing with the I Am statements, and, and your call to worship listed all seven of those I Am statements. I am the bread of life, I am the light of the world, I am the good shepherd. And so all of those are, are, are ways that Jesus helps us understand who he is, and, as well as God. As we look at, at today, I'm going to focus on I am the bread of life. We realize how Jesus sustains us and, and helps us and encourages us. And in our lives, that we do not live by bread alone, but by the very word of God. So this morning, my focus is on the I am statement, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. We all know how important bread is uh, to our lives and how important it is. But what I love about this story is that we have a, a setting where there are so many people. There's estimated that there are 5,000 people who are there. Who, are, who have listened to Jesus preach, to watch him heal, and, and to, to listen to the lessons that he, he was teaching. They were there mesmerized by him, and, and it's like, I wish you were here, here at church. You would just be so enthralled that I could go through lunch, and you wouldn't even miss it. But they started to get hungry, too. And as they got hungry, they were probably grumbling, much like the children of Israel which Jesus kind of compares this to that, that trip into the wilderness and when they were grumbling about not being fed and, and God gives to them manna. God gives them bread from heaven, that is Jesus. As he says, I am the bread of life. Jesus turns to Philip and says, Philip, you know, I can imagine him saying, what, what am I supposed to do? Randy plays Philip in the, in the Living Last Supper. He retells the story very well. What am I supposed to do? And then it's Andrew. Well, Philip says, heck if I know. There's, McDonald's is too far away. And carry out to, I mean, to, to get Godfathers to deliver. Uh, you know, if you look at what we got in the treasury, there's no way we can afford to feed all these, these people. And so he's, he said, I don't know, Lord, what to do when Andrew, Andrew says, there's this little boy here with his lunch. Now, Andrew is another one of the interesting disciples. Andrew was the brother of Simon Peter. Andrew, really, what his legacy is bringing people to Jesus. Bringing people to Jesus. He, he brought his own brother, Simon Peter, to, to get to, to Jesus and, and, to, and then become one of his great disciples. But Andrew was more one of the quiet ones rather than a, a leader like Peter. Andrew, though, was known for bringing people to Jesus, and one of them that he brought to Jesus was this little boy with a lunch. A little boy. You know, I think what is significant today and, and what is important for us to understand is in this story, it is the, it is the only, only story that really is found in all four Gospels. The story of the feeding of the multitude. In the other Gospels, they, they list the number, 5,000, but they say 5,000 men. And that's not counting the boy or, or the women in this story. But here we have one that really counts. One who volunteers his lunch so that others might be able to be fed. A little boy who is introduced into this story and what we realize that from then on we recognize that Jesus not only makes a difference in, in counting the little children, but also in counting women in this important ministry that he brought to this world. It's important for us to realize that this little boy in sharing his lunch helps us to recognize that God calls all of us. Now this morning, I, I believe that there is a child in this room, and it could be a boy or a little girl, who them themselves have something to bring to God. Something that is important. Something that maybe we already are planting seeds that is nurturing so that they will be able to grow and to, to make a difference in, in some way or some fashion. We all have that important need. And my hope is that our playground is a way of saying that children are important here at First United Methodist Church. They are a priority and we want to do all that we can with Christian education so that they know who Jesus is, they know of his love, and they go to make a difference in the world in the name of Jesus. 
Now this week, as I was getting ready, there was in one of my preaching magazines a, a little story about this pastor that had this huge family. You don't have these kind of families anymore, but when I was serving Gladbrook, we had the Flammies and the Brainies that would just fill a whole pew with their family. And so he went up to the family to welcome them, and he saw one of the little girls. He says, how many kids do you have? And, and the little girl says, seven, seven. You've got seven kids in this family? That must cost you a lot. She says, no, sir. We don't buy them. We, we raise them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we're all about is raising kids to be disciples of Christ. And here we have a little child that is brought in the midst of all of these people. And he's willing to volunteer his lunch so that others may be able to be fed. How important that is for us to realize how important our Sunday school department, how important our, our uh, music department, how important our youth department is in, in raising children to understand that love to grow in their faith. It's probably one of the most important things that, that we have. As we look today, as we focus on, it's no accident that I'm using the word volunteer many times in the service because that's what our focus is. It takes a lot of volunteers to make a church succeed. A wise person said, I think his name is anonymous, he's one of those Greek gods, I don't know who he is, but he said, God gives us the gift of life and our gift to God is, to, uh, is the way that we live our life. God gives us the gift of life, and our gift to God is the way we live our life. And how important that is to see that we are all called to offer ourselves, as the little boy offered his lunch, in seeking to make a difference in the world, in Jesus Christ. Now, that doesn't matter how old we are. We never, in a sense, are too old to make a difference. This week was a, 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 an incredible, incredible week. It, it began with the, the blood drive. And, and, and during the blood drive, I finally got a, a new joke, I can tell, in church that, that Paul Klotz didn't know. <laughs> so you can, I, got, I give you permission. I'm going to give you permission to laugh at this. But anyway, there was a man. This, this, the person that was I was getting you know, interviewed before I was giving blood, she was taking my temperature, and she was taking my blood pressure, and then she was asking me those embarrassing questions about how tall I am and how much I weigh. He says, you know, I had a man come up to me, and he said, uh, I asked him how much he weighed, and he said, well, I weigh 189 with glasses. 189 with glasses, and, and she says, what do you mean 189 with glasses? Well, that's the only way I can read my bathroom scale is by looking down at my, my glasses on. So, we're all in that predicament. I wasn't wearing glasses until 10 years ago. But no matter how old we are, no matter how young we are, Jesus has a place for us on his team to volunteer our time and to give of ourselves, whether it's greeting and welcoming people to church, whether it's ushering or, or teaching Sunday school, whether it's helping a child learn to sing. It's all important, and it all, all makes a difference. You know, this story is about the multiplication of five barley loaves and two fish that fed over 5,000 people. This is incredible. We witnessed an experience like that this week, right here in this church. On Wednesday, uh, Jeannie uh, McBellin, McBellin, uh brought in a, a, a flood bucket. And she was so moved by all the, the need in the area. She was so moved by seeing all the tragedy on the news that she and her grandchildren filled a, 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 a flood bucket. And, and they're both here by the altar because they're a reminder to us that this is some way that we can give. These flood buckets are full of disinfectant. They're, they're, they're full of rubber gloves. They're full of things that people can use like, like garbage bags. That if their house has been flooded, and you're feeling overwhelmed, a gift of a bucket is one way to help you know where to start, where to turn. It shows that somebody cares. And we gave over 200 of them just in North Sea ourselves. The 400 that arrived, in the sense that the mud, suddenly Wednesday we had one, and then on Thursday we had 401. 
And Matt, bless his heart, was helping and making sure that they were distributed, that we got the 200 up in, in North Cedar, that we had the buckets that went to Clarksville, that was just devastated, up to Shell Rock, as well as Nashua. Nashua. And what that was, was basically the multiplication of people, Jesus using people to make a difference. These buckets came from all over, and then they ended up at a depot in, in Illinois, and they were then brought over by a semi, where they could then be dis distributed. It's much like the kits that we do to the in-gathering. We, we make our school kits and our health kits, and we have no clue who they will be received, because what our hope is as a Christian church is they will go to our neighbor in need, no matter where our neighbor is. This morning, as we celebrate Worldwide Communion, it is in the same way of multiplying the love of Christ around the world and reminding as we break the bread and share the cup. It's a way of reminding that Christ's love surrounds this world. For me, it's, it's almost like he's got the whole world in his hands today when we celebrate that communion. Today, as we look at this scripture, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Today we come realizing that we are sustained by the bread of life, Jesus Christ himself. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you that we realize that we do not live by bread alone, that we live by the very word of your, your love, that word that speaks to us through the scriptures and through the kindness of others, words of encouragement or by the many volunteers who help us teach and to understand Jesus. And so, gracious God, as we come and share in the breaking of this bread and, and the drinking of this cup, that it speaks volumes of your love. And we offer all that we do in the name of Jesus.